Okay, there we go. You could probably hear me anyway, but I won't have to yell as much. Uh, great to see you. I missed seeing you guys last weekend <clears throat> with all that snow. And, uh, and I really miss coming to worship and, and, uh, and to church when we don't have it. But it's so good to be together again. You never know what attendance is going to be like the week after snow and with all the rain coming in and the cold weather coming in. So thank you for getting your pot of soup on before you came and coming here to worship. It's, uh, it's great to see you. Thank you if you're a guest or visiting uh, here at Fairview. We welcome you. And uh, there's always a little white card, I hope, in front of you. You can complete that. Let us know something about you. And uh, I'm looking later in February, maybe that last Sunday, to have a welcome to Fairview lunch. If you're a new member to Fairview, if you've been visiting for a while, want to find out more about our church and meet some of the staff and meet, discover some of the things that we do that you can be involved with, I want to encourage you to come to that. Always pick up that colored brochure out there. That gives you a lot of good things that are happening here. Uh, at our church. Well, we are beginning, uh, as Alan alluded to, uh, the study or the discussion of the little book, I Am a Church Member. So I'm going to, um, over the next couple of months, uh, share some sermon messages about that. Maybe take the same angle, maybe a different angle than the author, but I think it's uh, very important, uh, especially in the times that that we are in, that we remember and, and look at and study what being a biblical church member is all about. Because I think it's gotten a little diluted in this uh, 21st century, and certainly in the 20th century. Now, um, I live uh, in a, uh, a community. It's a over 55 community. Tammy's brother says I live in an old folks home. But it really, it really isn't that bad. We're pretty active there. But I do pay, and some of you may live in a neighborhood where you have to, I pay HOA fees. And everybody knows that's the homeowner association fees. And, um, of course, in that little community, there's, a, I guess, a lot of perks and benefits you get from that. <clears throat> but I pay into that every month. Now, I've never really gone and, and joined the Facebook page of the Homeowners Association. I'm not a big Facebook person. Uh, Tammy says all I am is a stalker. I'll go in there every now and then and catch up with my friends and stuff and see what's going on there. But I got on the HOA Facebook this week and um, just to see what was going on in the neighborhood. And I'm amazed that 80% of it is complaining. 80% of it is complaining. You know. Why didn't they get, why didn't they remove the snow well enough from our driveway? Uh, you know, uh, why isn't, why is all the changeover in the staff at the lodge? And uh, even one person said, I noticed upstairs that the that little workout place, the little towels, you have to wipe the little wet uh, towelettes that you use to wipe off the equipment. Uh, they were dripping on the floor. That shouldn't be. We should. We should just fire that staff person that's doing that. And so there's a, a lot of complaining about the staff there and about the work there and are we getting enough for our money? And, you know, I thought about that and I said, well, you know, people are paying their dues and each month and I guess they have a right to complain about what's going on. But then I thought, I said, I hear some of that stuff in church. Can you imagine that? <clears throat> You know, I, uh, I, I pay, I pay in church. I put money in the offering. I'm a member in church. Um, I tithe my money. And, uh, you know, pastor, you're not exactly preaching what I want you to preach. Or, you know, I, um, I in one church, I, I had a group that about two or three people that would almost do the white glove test on the windowsills or in, in little corners of the church and say, see, the, uh, the person cleaning the church is not doing their job. What are you going to do about that? And, uh, you know, you're not singing the songs I like to sing. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. And as you think about that, you know, 
maybe complaining like that. I mean, I'm not going to go on Facebook much more to our HOA because I, it's just kind of silly. But uh, all the complaining that's going on. But you think about it, why is that happening in the church? Goodness sake, yeah, we tithe, we give our dollars, we, we come, we're members. But does the Bible really say that we're members so that we can just demand our rights and our entitlement about what should happen for us in church? And as I started um, reading about that, in Scripture, what the Bible says about being a church member, I just I scoured, I really did. I just could not find um, thou shalt complain <clears throat> about your local church. I just couldn't find that anywhere in Scripture. Uh, but today, we're going to look at a little bit of what the Bible says about being a church member and uh, about being a functioning church member and the importance of that. So we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm just going to read you the end of that chapter, but I'll refer back to a little, a few of the verses in there so we can get a good understanding of, of what it really means to be a, a church member as Paul and Jesus talks about it. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, let me uh, read beginning with verse 27. Paul says, now you are the body of Christ, and each of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret? Now eagerly desire these greater gifts. So Paul is talking about what it means to be, he feels, a member of the church. Maybe this church at Corinth is having some of the same questions that, that we are. So first of all, as we see what he says in 1 Corinthians 12, the first thing Paul says is every Christian is a member of the body of Christ. Every Christian is a member of the body of Christ. Every, the body of Christ is the church. So what does that mean? Well, basically, every Christian is commanded to be a member of a local church somewhere. Paul does not say, you are a part of the body of Christ if you choose to be. You're a part of the body of Christ if it makes you happy. You're a part of the body of Christ if you believe in the local church. You are part of the body of Christ. You, you're, you're to be a church member, you know, no matter, uh, just if you, don't, if you feel sour about the church, you don't have to do that. He doesn't say that, does he? What does he say? You are a part of the body of Christ. Some of your versions will even use the word member. You're a member of the body of Christ over and over and over again. So if you are a believer, if you believe in Jesus Christ, if you're saved, if you've asked for forgiveness of your sins, the good news is you are immediately part of Jesus Christ's body on this earth. You're a part of his ministry, of his continuation of all that he did in the Gospels, of loving others, of sharing about the kingdom of God, of seeking to help people to be saved from themselves and their sin, to help people uh, obtain eternal life, and to uh, bear fruit in his name. You are automatically a member of his body, the church. And if you are a believer and you're not a functioning member of his body, you're not a functioning member of the local church, then you're not carrying out the Lord's command. You are a member of the church, but you have a choice about how you're going to function in that as a member of the church, don't you? You have a choice how involved you're going to get. You have a, a choice about are you going to come and help feed the poor of this neighborhood? 
of reaching out to the homeless, of sharing your faith with others, of uh, using your gift of teaching, or maybe using your gift of singing. Maybe uh, here at Fairview, you don't have to be a member on the roll to come talk to Willard about being a part of the praise team. You love to sing. God's gifted you with a good voice. Come and sing. Play an instrument. Come and do that. But what Paul is saying here is that you are a member of the church, but you can choose how much you're going to function. And you need to be a functioning member or you're not following out the Lord's commands. Now, some people ask the question, can I be a Christian without joining the church? Well, the answer, of course, is yes. Uh, sure you can. Being a Christian is accepting the love and grace and forgiveness through Jesus Christ who died for your sin, right? But it's almost, yes, you can be a Christian and not join the local church, not be a functioning member, but if you do, it's something like being this. It's like being a student who will not go to school. It's like being a soldier who will never join the army. It's like being a citizen who does not pay taxes or never votes. It's like being a salesman with no customers, an explorer with no base camp, uh, a, a violin player without being a part of an orchestra or a percussionist, Nora. You gotta use your gifts, right? A football player without a team, a politician who's a hermit, a scientist who does never shares his findings, a bee without a hive. Yeah, you can, you can be saved, you can be going to heaven and not be a functioning member of the church. But it's not natural. It's not what Jesus wants you to do, is it? That's what Paul is saying. Now, the next thing he says about, about being a functioning church member is that he reminds us a little further up in that chapter, in verse 12 through 14, he says... The church, now we're talking about the church, that's us, believers who are functioning. We consist of many diverse people. Have you realized that? That everybody at church when you go is not like you exactly? That we're all different? You know, not everybody can be as good looking as me. I know that. It, it, it's a diverse, it's a diverse group out there. But you know, I still come. But every church, every local body has different personalities in it. Hey, you're, you know, you, 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 and you're, maybe you had to realize that. There's different personalities here in our congregation. There are different family backgrounds, different ethnic backgrounds. Uh, even, it's hard to believe, with a group of a larger church, there's different opinions. I know you don't believe that, but we have different opinions from time to time here at church. But even though we're diverse, Paul says the miracle of the local church is that Jesus brings us all together. That's the difference in belonging to an HOA in a community and the church. Despite our diversity, Jesus uses that to do miraculous things in his kingdom. Paul says it like this in verse 12, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we're all given one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many. What makes us one is that we're all saved by the same Lord Jesus. What makes us one is that we all have the same Holy Spirit in us. What makes us one is that we're all baptized in Jesus' name. So no matter if... Uh, we look different, or we talk different, our personalities are different, or even if we have different opinions, or you vote yes and I vote no, we're called to be one in Jesus Christ. We're diverse, 
But the only way we can be a force for Jesus in this city and in this world is if we're one in the Spirit. I've always chuckled in the churches I've pastored at, from time to time, not many, but sometimes members will come and say, I'm leaving the church. I'm going to go find another church which is better. I'm going to go find another church which meets my needs. I'm going to go and find another church that believes like I do. I'm going to go and find another church that doesn't have as many problems. And I almost want to say, wait, when you find that, can you let me know? Because I want to go there too. Because there's just no church that exists like that. There, there, there is no church like that. You know, all churches have their difficulties. No church exists that's perfect. The problem is when we join another church, if nothing else, we take us with us. That's what I want to say. Well, you're taking you with you. And certainly none of us are perfect, are we? There was a, a one church I pastored. There was a family. And when I got there, they used to belong to this church, but they had moved to another church. And so after a year, they must have thought I was okay, so they came back and joined our church again. And uh, I was thinking, that's great. And I said in the back of my mind, well, goodness, if they left once are they going to leave again what's going on here and, and and it was really great about a year year and a half later um, they got disgruntled by something that was happening and then they didn't like something our youth minister said or did and one of the members of the family uh, one of the husband or the wife called me and said because the youth minister did this uh, I want you to fire her you need to fire her. and so I kindly said well no you know, what she said or did didn't agree with what your opinion, but she's not getting fired. She's doing a great job, so no, we're not firing her. And I uh, said, so, well, I'm sorry. I thought this church has changed, but it hadn't. So we're going to go to another church. And so they left the church again. So they were members, and they left, and they came back, and then they went to another church. And I don't know how many more churches they've gone to since then looking for the perfect church. There is no perfect church. I love N.T. Wright. He's a kind of a modern, one of the modern day theologians I read a lot. And here's what N.T. Wright says. He says, the church is not supposed to be a society of perfect people doing great work. It's a society of forgiven sinners repaying their unpayable debt of love by working for Jesus' kingdom in every way they can, knowing themselves to be unworthy of the task. Isn't that really good? Did you hear that? The church is not supposed to be a society of, of, of perfect people. It's a society of forgiven sinners. And we're just trying to repay the unpayable debt. We can never do it. The unpayable debt of love by Jesus for working for his kingdom in every way that we can. And in the midst of doing so, we know that we're unworthy of the task, but we try anyway. And that's the kind of attitude that Jesus blesses. That's the kind of church that Jesus blesses. So the, remember, Paul says this, we know we're diverse, we're different, we're many parts, but we still form one body. Therefore, every church, how God does this is this. Every church member, every Christian has been gifted by God to, to have a special function in Christ's body. How are we to accomplish this enormous task of sharing the gospel with the world and being the body of Jesus? Well, the answer is we can't do it. We can never be Jesus. We're just forgiven sinners. But God does it through us as he gives the church, you and me, spiritual gifts to get it done. What does that mean? It means that that Fairview, <clears throat> whether you're a guest or member, you're, you're a Christian, Fairview has been given the Christians and the gifts to reach our neighborhood, Fredericksburg, and beyond. 
I would even go as far to say that in this room, or certainly in our worship services today, there are all the gifts of the Spirit represented that can get the job done. Do you believe that? That's what the Bible says. That the Spirit gifts every body, every one of his bodies, with the gifts to get the job done. If we're not getting the job done, then there are members who are not functioning, they're not exercising their gifts and working for the kingdom. When Paul says it this way, we need every arm, every leg, every hand, every finger, every toe to be doing their part. Have you ever tried to walk around and do normal things with, with, with the injured toe? A little old toe? Don't think about it till you, you strain it, till you break it, till you, till you, you know, you hit it on the, you know, Tammy stubs her toe and and I have to, we have to pray and repent for the bad words she said. You know, that, 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 that toe, that toe hurts. <laughs> that toe can be painful. It's an important part of the body. So there's no job too small at our church, is there? Nothing. Everything is for the glory of God. You know what should be happening at this time of the year? with our teams and committees and vacation Bible school leaders and workers and Awana leaders and teacher recruitment. The nominating team has been working hard. That's the group in our church who ask you to serve if you don't know that. And, um, you know, they go all over the place trying to find people to fill the slots to do the body of Christ work here at Fairview. And we're still short a few people. Which the fact should be, it should almost be like the oyster roast we've got coming up. If you don't know about our oyster roast, and in a few weeks, Art's going to put the oyster roast poster down there and ask for volunteers. And our church swarms down there to make sure you get on the list to do the job you want to do, right? Because if you don't, somebody's going to get ahead of you. All of our teams and committees and ministries and those who fix breakfast for the homeless twice a week and work in the food pantry on Saturday. We should have a waiting list and people should be coming to me complaining, Pastor, I, I want to teach, but, but there's no, but there, the, the teaching's all filled up and, and we have subs for all of them. When am I going to get to teach? And I should say, well, let's start a new class. You know, we, we should be lined up to do the work of Jesus, shouldn't we? And I'm not talking just about Fairview. <laughs> Every church I've pastored, I think it's a national issue in our churches, right? So if you have not committed to serve somewhere at Fairview, even if it's the little toe, why not? Paul says you're not pulling your weight. That may be okay for some civic organization, and I probably will never sign up or serve on a committee or the board of directors in my HOA, and that's okay. But that's not okay here, because we're talking about eternal consequences, aren't we? We're talking about the Lord God. So this week's challenge, as you discuss Tom Rainer's little book, is recognizing that becoming a functioning church member is not an option, but a command that Jesus gave Paul to tell to us. Go back and read 1 Corinthians 12. And so I'm asking you to really think in invitation time and to pledge to yourself this little bit from Tom as you read the end of his book. Because I am a member of the body of Christ, I must be a functioning church member. Whether I'm an eye, an ear, or a hand, as a functioning member, I will give, serve, and minister. I will seek to be a blessing to others. Isn't that a great pledge to take? I will seek to be a blessing to others. You want to change the world? Let's be a blessing to others in Jesus' name. That's what we need right now. That's why it's so important. 
So as we all contemplate what Jesus has said to us today through Paul, I'm going to pray in a minute. We're going to sing a a closing song and and, uh, just um, talk to the Lord and say, what do you want me to do with your word today? Um, And, you know, I'm... I'll be honest, part of that is there may be some people here that over the next few weeks talk to me, talk to Willard or Alan or somebody from the church, and, and maybe you need to become a functioning member here. You need to not get on a roll like uh, the, well, the, the Ruritans were big back where I was before. What is it here, the Elks or something? I don't know, different stuff that's around. I'm not asking you to be on a roll. I'm asking you to be a functioning part of the body of because that's what Jesus has. So maybe you want to take care of that over these next couple of months, and we can get you functioning and working. Let's pray together, and then we'll sing. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving us, and Lord, for, for loving us so much and thinking of us so much that it doesn't end there, but we have the privilege of being your very body here on earth, that we have the privilege sometimes of suffering for you, that we have the privilege, certainly, of, of ministering in your name and, God, uh, just uh, seeing you do great things in your world. Lord, uh, help us to just remember what we are doing now and what we need to be doing, not for anybody else, but for you. In Jesus' name we pray.